Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hill. I'm delighted again to be able to speak to Joey Randall, CEO of Venture Life Group, a leading OTC healthcare products firm. So welcome, uh, Jerry. Thanks, Paul. Nice to see you again. Yeah, well, big congrats on today's positive uh, 2022 results and um, inline um, outlook for 2023 with um, sales rising 17% like for like to £44 million. Maybe you could start there. What's been sort of driving that strong double-digit top-line growth? Yeah, it's been um, uh, right across the business, so both in our Venture Life brands, but also in the customer brands. And in particular, in the Venture Life brands, it's been driven by the Lyft product. That's our diabetes uh, product. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, it's used in, for people with diabetes, it's also used in sport. Uh, it's gone into the main retail channels, main grocery multiples. But what we've seen is a real increase in pharmacies recommending, particularly to type 2 diabetics, to use this product. And the real benefit is it's very transportable, either as chewables or small shots, but it's a measured dose, so they know exactly what dose they're getting. And the main competitor, um, uh, Dextro, doesn't have that same sort of specific dose, so it's actually you know, recommended by pharmacy. So that's where we've seen growth there on Amazon as well, because our online uh, sales are growing quite strongly. And then Balance Active uh, growing nicely as well, both um, uh, you know in, in the UK, but also we've launched that in uh, Germany over Amazon, and that'll be rolling out across Europe, across the Amazon platform. So they've gone well. And, and uh, on our customer brands business, you know, particularly strong performance for that part of the business, over 40% up over last year. There's a little bit of inventory build from some customers, um, but even taking that out, more than 30% growth over the previous year. And that's just great management of customers, bringing in new customers, real demand. And we've seen a little bit of competitors falling out of the market because they're not able to supply and they haven't managed the supply chain side as well so that's been beneficial to us because we've managed that really well yeah i mean that was a real strategic um sort of like uh good good play that good good decision that one in terms of the sort of pricing power of your own sort of products i'm guessing sort of like uh balance active and lift i mean given they've done so well and they are niche products that have good pricing power i imagine no, they do i mean i, I think um as you'll be aware there's always pressure against price mm. rise um, there always will be, and, and in the current environment, high inflation, um, that that's even more so. So uh, we've managed to pass on our you know price increases uh, so far, and that's to either our distribution partners or you know through retail where appropriate. So at the moment, yes, they do have good good pricing power. Uh, they're in a good niche spot. They've got uh, good growth, good products that they're well uh, followed. So um, we see that as a benefit from those sort of products. Mm. And it looks as though, just looking at your sort of H1, H2 split, you've had a good uptick in your EBITDA margin. I saw in the sort of first half you did 17 18% EBITDA margins, but you did 22 23% in the, in the second half. And uh, how, how do you see that going forward? In terms, because I mean, how, how, first of all, how, is it generated from just operating, you know, sort of economies of scale or whatever? Yeah, it's a combination of, um, of operating scale and mix. Um, so I think, as you know, our venture life brands mm. have high, and we have a bigger proportion of sales in the second half of the year from our venture life brands. So that's bringing in that higher margin into the mix, but also the overall operating leverage. You know, as we put more through the factories, um, we get greater profitability. So uh, as we go forward, um, obviously, we want to, the whole of the year to be uh, more full than it is now, and you'll see that um, operating margin, that you know, EBITDA margin coming up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at it, you did sort of like. Uh, 5.6 million EBITDA in the second half. And I think I think actually your EBITDA was better than expectations, wasn't it? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yes. well yes. done. Yeah, yes. good. Um, and now just in terms of your sort of your own sort of like that mix, etc., your own products, etc., what percentage of the group is it? If you just remind investors. Yeah, sure. So on, on a run rate basis at the end of the year, because obviously we'd acquired uh, the year old business just before the end of the year, it's about 57% now. Um, wow, so- okay. 60% and uh, we'd expect to see good growth out of Aero this year. So again, we'd expect that percentage to start to increase. Uh, and in fact, because there was such a strong uh, customer brands um, business last year, that's you know, sort of kept the VOG brands down. So, uh, you know, absent that, we'd expect it to go over 60%. Fantastic. Um, and how's sort of like um, the sort of trading in, the, in that sort of first quarter so far? How has that been progressing? Yeah, tra- trading's fine. I mean, obviously, as you saw, we had a, a very big order book at, at, uh, at the end of the year, and that order book um, continued to grow. It's, it was higher uh, at the end of February than it was uh, at the end of the year. So we've seen those orders continue to flow through. Trading's 
um, slightly ahead of uh, what we'd expect in the first quarter. So we're very happy with that. Um, yeah. I think as, as everyone sees in the trading statement, you know, we're, we're cautiously optimistic. I think mm. we've all learned from the last three years. <laughs> yes, know, you wise. Can't, you can't look too far ahead. Um, you know, at the moment, yeah, you know, we're very happy with things and uh, trading is very good. Yeah. And what about sort of like um, sort of the, you know, the initiatives going forward for your own in house sort of like brands in terms of, I don't know, maybe product development, promotion or extra distribution overseas and abroad? Yeah, it's all of those things. I mean, new product development's a big thing for us this year. And obviously, uh, we're working on our more recently acquired brands at Eero. There's some uh, good new product development going on there, similarly within Lyft and similarly within Balance Active. So that's a very active program for us. We've got the capability in Italy and Sweden to do that. So you'll see a number of those uh, launches of new products next year into the UK and internationally. And then with our branch, you know, there's a lot of international markets to empty. You will have seen at the back end of last year, we signed that great deal in um, uh, Brazil with Blau yeah. uh, for Gio. That was a really good deal. So more of those to come. So it's both of those aspects and a real focus on organic growth for us this year and uh, getting behind our brands and starting to deliver uh, the sort of growth that they can, uh, you know, they can bring. Mm. And what about sort of the um, the foot care and the and the mouthwash for 2023? Because obviously there was a bit of sort of like a you know price um, indigestion, I guess, at the start of 2022. How, how you how do you see, see that sort of like developing, particularly out maybe out in China as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the foot care. I'll take the one first. We had a distributor yeah. in uh, one of the European countries who who uh, decided to uh, cease with the product. So we're looking for another distributor there. We expect that to uh, to be found and. Continue there. The foot care is a good franchise. We're, we're quite happy with that. Um, the oral care products are a bit more difficult, as you quite rightly said. In quarter one, of 2022, mm-hmm. we had to put through a price rise on dental. Um, that did affect sales in quarter one, and they came back in quarter two, three, and four, but obviously didn't catch up. So on a sort of run rate basis, we're, we're happy that they're getting back to where they were before. But it's it's a competitive space, and the mouthwash market went down by about six percent last year. So. You know, we're, we're sort of going with that trend. Um, Ultradex, interestingly enough, is still the number one halitosis brand, uh, mouthwash mm-hmm. brand in the UK, uh, more than double any of the competitors. So that still has a good space. But again, you know, it's recovering from that uh, sort of lack of events, lack of going out that we saw in 21 and 22 and coming back from those. That said, the dental brand, when it was selling in China, was, was selling very well, um, did well in, in China. So we're hoping now that China's starting to unlock with our partner, Samarkand will begin to generate better sales again with, with dental. So, uh, you know, we think that could be a good opportunity. And there's still some international markets where we can take those oral care products. So we're not investing heavily in them, uh, you know, because you can't compete against those really, really big brands. But, you know, the cash generative, they they, they bring good profitability to us. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to review them over the next couple of years to see whether there's something we should retain in our portfolio or, or do something else with yeah okay and, and just in terms of this on the MA, how's the um, integration of um, hl going at the moment yeah HL Healthcare. Uh, yeah yeah it, it, it's, it was a very uh lightly overheaded business only to start with it so the uh, commercial integration is complete that's all being dealt with by our uh, commercial team now uh, the regulatory and technical integrations ongoing that'll take about 12 months uh, to finish so we're no, very happy with it and it's going very well um say trading nicely in the in the first quarter as we'd expect so uh, very happy with that yeah that does look like a, a beautiful little um nice niche uh, brand to bring on board no doubt about it for the portfolio yeah, fantastic products and well regarded in the specialists yeah how's the well, what was the sort of situation with the um sort of supply chain and input cost inflation at the moment i'm guessing that's prob- hopefully <laughs> easing slightly yeah it's definitely <laughs> easing i mean we've um you know, I would say the sort of May, June, July time in 22 was the real sort of pinch point when we were getting repeated issues with availability as well as significant price increases. And, and I would say we've sort of gone at slightly over the peak of those now. We're, we're certainly seeing competition starting to come back into pricing with more than one supplier. Um, we're still seeing those longer lead times, and I think that's just a function of uh, people, again, being cautious and, and, and wanting to... Um, maintain good visibility so i would say it's slightly off the top and slightly better than it was uh, but it's by no means gone away yet um on, on the heating side i mean we were really pleased i think the, the heating costs because uh, we heat the factories uh, with gas they weren't as high by the time we got to january as we'd anticipated i think they were probably double where they were the year before rather than treble so that's been a bit better and i think that's come through the fact that europe probably thinks it's got enough gas 
uh, mm-hmm. to store it away to keep going for the year. So, um, you know, that's been helpful. But on, on the cost of goods side, we are seeing green shoots, but I think it's still a difficult market. And I think we still have to, you know, keep a good eye on that as we go forward. Mm. And then, and then just talk sort of longer term in, with regards to <clears throat> sort of factory utilisation and uh, capacity, et cetera. I mean, you've still got quite a lot of um, spare um, sort of like, you know, ability to increase that whole sort of throughput, haven't you, I guess? <laughs> yes. Yes. In fact, in both factories, we have that. And um, and that's really sort of fundamental to our growth and that, and that EBITDA margin, you know, pushing upwards. Because as you've seen in the second half of the year, as we've got more volume to the business, mm. there's a trigger to, to uh, accelerate that profitability so um, yeah as we grow organically and, and in the future if you do more m a you know we'll utilize more of that capacity and, and get get more operating leverage out of it and we're already looking at projects to go into sweden as well because that's only running at 20 percent of its capacity so we've got some ongoing uh, projects to put in there and, and in italy as well we're continuing to grow so yeah uh, fundamental to our continued growth and a good capacity still available Good. And then just in terms of the actual um, sort of the, the cash generation and um, sort of the net debt position, I saw it, obviously, it ticked up slightly at the year end, simply because you've just done the uh, the HL acquisition. <laughs> how, how are you seeing, seeing that sort of progressing? Yeah, just sure. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, as, as, as you know, we, we had the RCF. It's been in, it was in place. It's been in place mm-hmm. for about 18 months now. Um, and we were progressing the year acquisition earlier in the year. And, and uh, we were looking to close just when the whole, you know, sort of interest rate debt market, you know, um, had a bit of a uh, scare. Yeah. Um, so we, we sort of, you know, took stock and and uh, made sure we looked at it. So, you know, we ended up coming in with the net debt leverage of about 1.4 times at the end of the yeah. year. And we were comfortable with our, our um, gross debt covenants at two and a half times. So we're, you know, we're comfortably under those. So already uh, by uh, after the first few months of the year, we're down to 1.3 times. Cash generation is really good. Um, we've got some deferred consideration to pay out quarter two this year on Eero, but mm. you know we're, that won't significantly uh, you know impact on our on that leverage. So by the end of the year, we'd expect our net leverage to be much closer to one, if not below it. And uh, as you saw, that um, operating cash generation up to uh, you know over sixty percent compared with just with over twenty percent uh, last year, we really squeezed that inventory now, squeezed that working capital to make sure that we're getting that cash conversion. Uh, coming through so i'd expect to see good continued cash conversion this year and that will be used to bring down the rcf mm. yeah i'm guessing sort of that year-end um, inventory build or just you done, done for your customers etc if supply chains do ease in 2023 then that cash should then be released into your into the business i imagine yeah i mean we're still you know as you've seen the market numbers are still predicting good growth for uh yeah. 2023 even on yeah organic. And, that, and that tends to suck about 15 percent working cap uh, to revenue once you, as you as you grow the business, so there will be some growth there. But um, the inventory levels are high because of that long order book. You know, when we've got the orders, we can buy the inventory, lock the prices. There's quite a delicate balance at the moment because um, between do you order further out for inventory or do you wait another month or two when the price might drop? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we, so and, and it's not a simple overarching uh, view. It's it's very. Uh, unique to lots of different products, um, raw materials, packaging. So, you know, our, our purchasing team sat on a little bit of a knife edge at the moment where, you know, month by month, they're sort of perhaps delaying the purchase of some inventory because they think the price might go down, you know, and that, and that could add, you know, three or four percentage points onto your margin. So, mm. uh, but but that's the position it's in at the moment. It's getting better. There's a, a sort of delicate balance to be, uh, to be played, but, um, you know, absent any more black swans, then I think it will yeah. continue through the year yeah well your purchasing team certainly did a good good job in uh, 2022 no doubt about it and uh, hopefully we don't get any black swans but i can imagine we're probably going to get a few uh, sort of more common black ducks i think in 2023 which we'll have to get, get used right. to i don't know yeah so in terms of sort of like um, organic growth is that where the focus is going to be then on, on, in 2023 and to drive down that debt yeah it is because we we've spent a lot of money on buying these great brands and it's really yeah. important to get out of those uh and they've grown well in 22. We're really happy with that growth there and uh, particularly grow more in 23, particularly um, the oncology uh, products that we bought in 21. They're all licensed out. So there's a lead time in getting new distributors and, and then getting orders. But uh, they, their growth is relatively you know, small in, in 22. But in 23, you'll see a good impact from those as those new distributor deals come through. So, yeah, that's where we are. We want to invest in those this year. We haven't turned off the M&A tap. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, we're... Share price to 
you know, appreciate a lot more before we, you know, even consider raising the equity. But um, there are still good opportunities out there and uh, we still continue to review them. But uh, the focus is definitely on the organic side of the business. Yeah. <clears throat> and then just in terms of sort of refinancing, I know the Silicon Valley you were thinking about doing, but now they've actually been bought by HSBC, <laughs> haven't they? <laughs> Yeah, goodness me, that was quite a weekend. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, so Silicon Valley is now owned by HSBC or the UK bidders. Uh, from then, we've had the message clearly it's just business as usual. Yeah. Uh, nothing changed. Uh, we also had the same message from HSBC saying, you know, we own Silicon Valley now, but don't worry, it's business as usual. But um, the renewal of the facility is in June of next year. Yeah. Um, so, we've already began to have discussions with uh, Santander and uh, the others about what we're going to do. I mean, Santander, I have to say, have been brilliant. You know, they're really supportive. That particularly that weekend when um, uh, you know it was all going yeah. sort of pear shaped, uh, they they stood sort of behind us and said, "Look, don't worry. Uh, whatever happens, we'll you know take care of you." So um, they were they were fantastic. And uh, so yeah, it's business as usual with that facility, and uh, we'll look for the renewal uh, next year. But we're already starting to have those discussions, obviously, in light of uh, what happened. Good. And then just finally, then, with regards to the um, sort of outlook, is it sort of like, you know, we've got the AGM probably sometime in, I don't know, is it May or June? And then we may, may have May. Uh, and then we may have some sort of like BD sort of activities or product. What, what, how, how do you see it? Yeah. So so what, what you're going to see is the launching of our new products that we're developing. You're going to see sort of trading dates and revenue progression, order book progression. Um, you'll see, uh, you know, also when we get a new list, this is part of the progression this year will be some of those um, new products we bought getting listed in further stores. Um, and we're planning a capital markets day, uh, oh, okay. which, will, which will happen towards the end of the, this half. So details of that will come out in due course. But that will allow us to um, open up a little bit more of the uh, management below us uh, that you see on a regular basis. And, you know, um, that will be video. So, you know, people who aren't able to attend will be able to. Um, you know, see that. So that, that's the sort of news flow. But I think you'll just see progression in the first half. Uh, trading update in July, obviously, once we've uh, finished our first half. But uh, we're very happy how the first half is going. Uh, mm. You know, it's going very positively. Trading as well, and we just see that that continuing growth of the uh, organic part of the business. Brilliant. Well, looking forward to the uh, the capital markets update. Definitely, I'll give a lot more sort of good granularity actually into so your yeah. niche products and the growth trajectory, and you know why they why they're develop, you know, delivering double digit growth already. So um, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, and thanks very much, uh, Jerry. Speak to you soon. Thanks for all pleasure.